Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Create an Impact podcast, episode four. I have an amazing guest on today, Taylor Diaz Mercado. She is an actor and model out in Los Angeles. She's originally from Columbus, Ohio, like myself. Go Buckeyes. And Go she, Buckeyes. Yes. And she has an amazing story of how she drove her car from Columbus to LA to pursue a dream of hers. And she's a very inspiring story that will add a lot of value to her lives. And I'm really excited to have you on today. Um, tell me about a little bit where your journey started and go from there. Oh boy. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for the really sweet introduction. Um, I'm excited to be here. Uh, story. Where do you want to start? Like the when decision where I, yeah, oh, yeah. when I was younger, yeah, growing like up, why yeah. I decided okay. yeah, Columbus and where um, I started. Yeah. So I grew up in Columbus. We actually went to similar schools and we have like a close circle. We talked about it before the podcast yeah, started. Yeah. Um, but I grew up in Westerville, Ohio for the most part. Okay. And um, I hated, I hated school so much. Right. I love Ohio and I love the people, but, right. um, I was bullied a lot, really, really bullied. And, um, oh, you were? Oh, every day in high school. I grew up on Polaris yeah. for like 20 years. So yeah, I wonder if it's just in the water. Like, I don't get it, Yeah. but like, there's a lot of people I hear of that were just like, we were really mean to each other, the kids in that right. area. And it's unfortunate. Cause like, yeah. you know, you have people like you that are like really sweet and uplifting and then you get your, you know. Mm-hmm your kindness kicked out of you a little bit. Um, but yeah, I grew up in Westerville and I was bullied a lot and, um, I was kind of just sinking. I was stif- I was like pushing down all this trauma that I'd suffered at a really young age. And I had no real friends, the people right. really, really mean to me. And I just stopped caring. Right. And I remember my principal at the time, I'm not going to name names, but he changed my life. Mm-hmm. Um, by traumatized me. <laughs> right. He sat me down and he goes, um, cause he saw that my grades were like just bad and right. I wasn't, I was skipping. I was, right. you know, getting in a lot of trouble. Right. Um, and I just, I was just kind of, I think emotionally dying, honestly. Right. And he pulled me into his office and was like, Taylor, you can't make it just cause you're pretty. Right. And to me that really hurt because no one had asked me what's going on. Like nobody asked, why is this happening? They just assumed that I thought I was pretty, which I didn't because of the stuff that was done to me at a really young age. Right. And so it made me mad. I was like, you know what? F you. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to prove you wrong and all this other stuff. So, um, I ended up working for Abercrombie and Fitch in the stores. Okay. And, um, then Mike Jeffries came into one of our stores and audited and, um, I stupidly had no idea who he was yeah. and we just started talking and he, um, he brought me to home office, the corporate. Okay. And, um, then I just worked for the company for about six years, started doing, um, e-commerce work for them. Did what was it like their videos, did modeling stuff, their promo stuff. And that's how I met, you know, some of our mutual friends as well. So, yeah. um, yeah, it was, that's kind of where my modeling career started. I, I was funny cause, um, I used to want to be a model but I don't anymore. Yeah. And it's weird. And I'm actually happy because like right. I wanted to be a model for the wrong reasons. I wanted right. to prove to someone that like I was valuable. I was worthy. I was something to be, you know, looked at or someone to pay attention to me because I just felt very unseen and really alone. Right. Um, but not for that like sadness, I guess. <laughs> no, you're good. But, I love it. Yeah. So I, I was, I've been very blessed. Like God's been super good to me. Um, the universe, whatever you want to say, but yeah, I've just, I've gotten to work for awesome corporations, companies. I've got to travel so much. Right. Yeah. I know um, that. A lot of free things. It's really, really cool. Like right. very, very blessed. Um, but unfortunately I took the, the pain in from my like past before yeah. modeling into my modeling, which is, okay. was so dangerous. And it, it almost took my life right. wholeheartedly. Um, I struggled with drugs and drinking and all this trauma. And I, I just was, I looked in the mirror one day and I just like, looked and I was like, who is this person? Right. Now I no longer like am bullied anymore. Right. But now I have people saying like, I want to come to your parties, you mm-hmm. know, let's hang out, let's go to the mall, let's do this, let's that. And then but I'm just like, it was, it's just a, it's hard, kind of hard to explain. Right. But, I yeah, that's where it kind of started. 
I do agree with a lot because I went to Old Tangy Orange High School and I got picked on every day throughout Old I went to Old Tangy too for two years, so I switched over. We were the first seniors to graduate. I graduated with Zach Joseph, the lead singer of Twenty One Pilots' brother, actually. And cool. I just it was yeah, it was pretty cool. And it was just I was in his music video. <laughs> yeah, shout out to you guys. And I just. I got picked on every day and I, I try to connect with so many different people growing up and kind of like, you know, us sharing our stories here, you know, growing up in Columbus, Ohio, everybody living in 270, acting like they got to be somewhere, you know, we're just yeah. such a, everybody like knows each other. Like you're at East End, yeah. Short North, down on campus. Or, yeah. And yeah. talk a little bit more about like your role models growing up, like people in your life that have really helped you become the person you are today. Um, See, that, that's really funny, and I think that's maybe one of my bigger struggles. Um, I really didn't have many role models growing up. Right. Like, I, I was never, I'm never, like, the person that, like, looks at the famous person mm -hmm. that was just like, I want to be like that. Right. I always found, like, maybe, um, like, you said one of your role models was Tony Robbins. Yeah, uh, definitely. I found that a little bit, like, later in the journey. Um, Same with me. Yeah. Yeah. So I really didn't have role models. And I think that was my biggest problem is that I didn't have role models. I mean, I had a mom that I loved dearly, but hurt me because she was never there and she was trying the best she can. She's a wonderful woman, but, mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a woman to look up to really. Um, and then I also didn't have a father figure. So I didn't really have a role model. I was just like, Oh, well that person's really kind. So I like that kindness in that person. Right. Um, or, I'm, I've, I've always been kind of, I guess, being an empath, as you would say, like very um, self-aware. Right. It's just like, okay, just like I, I want to be, yeah, it's like I want to be kinder. I want to be funnier. I want to be, I want, I admire these things in other people and I would like them in myself. Um, and so I guess my role models were like Tony Robbins, Brene Brown. I loved okay. Oprah for a little Oprah, bit. Yeah, me too. Yeah. She's yeah. Like Ellen. So yeah. I Ellen love, was very funny. Ellen. Just my yeah, personality I mean, type. I'm an ENFP. So. Oh, same. I'm me too. Yeah, I'm the camp painter. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, same. You're an inspirer. Um, so. Yes. Are you inspired? <laughs> Just for today, you know? No, every day. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, but like, yeah, I did modeling. So, of course, I looked up to models. But I think that that kind of was not super helpful for me a little bit. Like, I was like, oh, I want to be, you know, 5'7". And a hundred pounds soaking wet. Like I can't, it was, it was something that was just not me. Yeah. So, um, it kind of tore me up a little bit inside. And so I, I guess maybe there was like a part of me deep down that knew that if I kept looking for certain role models in the yeah. direct in like the industry I was in, it was not going to be healthy for my emotional state. Right. Um, so I kind of started going into the world of like inspirational people and, um, like TED talks and things like that. Right. That's my dream yeah. is to be a TED talk speaker actually. So that is one of my dreams. Yeah. This is one of my dreams. I'm, I'm trying to get involved in Toastmasters. It's a nonprofit organization where you do public speak. It's kind of like the AA of public speakers. So yeah, I did Toastmasters. They have them in New Albany. Yeah. 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 How was it? Did you, how was your experience with that? It, it was terrifying. Yeah. But it was good. Yeah. It was terrifying. I had um, an ex take me because oh, okay. he was doing it for work. Yeah. And um, I was like, okay, I'll go. I did pageants, you know. Yeah. I can always be a better public speaker. Yeah. So I went and they made me get in front of a room of, of people that right. I, I didn't know. And that was the first time I actually um, realized that I can perform for people easily if right. I don't know them. If okay. I really don't know them. But he was there. So I was just like, the only person I really cared about was the person that knew me. Right. And the other people, I was just like, ah. but as soon as he walked back in the room, I was like, and so yeah. that was a cool, it was, it's very, uh, it's a very cool organization. I highly suggest it. Yeah, definitely. Um, big fan of Lewis Howes. He actually, he's from Columbus. He's a school of greatness podcast. And I, that's I like, I, that's my favorite <laughs> podcast. Actually. I've, um, he actually went to Toastmasters and I've got been inspired through his story to, you know, um, do that. Is that really good? Yeah, who me? You think so? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's funny. Yeah, you got the funniness. You know, you got the 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 good little tidbits of like self help and like compassion and yeah, yeah I could totally I, see that. I have a very big heart, and a lot of people have walked on it many times in my life. So, but hey, I, I learn the purest hearts bring out 
other people's hearts. And when you do that, that is when you're going to transform people's lives. Another thing. So like this Toastmasters thing, did this help you perform with your acting later on too? Um, you would say like in certain uh, skips? I'd say so. Yeah. I mean, once you get the ball rolling in a certain direction, like yeah. it's repetition, you've seen that. It's like your first time you're like, Oh my gosh, like yeah. this is crazy. But then once you, you keep doing it and you yeah. keep that momentum going, you look at it less of like a scary experience and more of right. like a learning experience. Cause you're just like, all right, well, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try this again. So yeah, it definitely is helped. Um, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is like, your main mission right now from like, you know, moving to LA, what was like that journey? Like that journey, like driving all the way across country. How was that for you? Oh my gosh. Well, first off, I think it was more of a journey before I even packed my car. Yeah. Cause every day I wake up with this goal, this right. thing that I is just on my heart that I know in the deepest part of my soul, right. it's where I'm meant to be like my next step. And it's so big. Right. And I mean, in Ohio, like I had connections, I yep. had companies, I had family, I had friends, I had, you know, I could, my phone could die and I knew where I was going. Right. You know, I didn't really have, it was like, I didn't really have a growing or stretching experience in Columbus. It was very mm -hmm. rare for me to find that. So that's why I think I enjoyed Toastmasters so much. Right. Um, but yeah, it's like every day I would wake up and I'd be like, oh my God, like, Am I really doing this one more day off the thing? It's getting closer. It's getting closer. And um, I'm really grateful for my faith because I was going to church and um, right. I, I still try to implement that in my life. But I just felt like God was just walking beside me. It was like, this is for you. I am for you. Like, it's going to be okay. And you don't see a way because before I left, like a week before I left, I, I had no apartment. I had no money, like little to no money. And I had no friends. I had one friend that I knew of like years ago that lived in LA, but she was so busy that like, um, she, I knew she kind of couldn't be there for me the way I would like a friend to be, but yeah. she, she's an amazing, amazing person. Right. And so I'm like, like, literally I'm like, Oh my God, I have nothing. I do not see a way. And two days before I, well, okay. So I'll backtrack a little bit. Um, a week before, you know, I, I'm supposed to leave for LA Right. I'm on set doing this short film and someone comes to me and goes, I'm just, I'm like freaking out to the director. Like it was a good friend of mine. I'm like, I'm really nervous. Give me all the tips and suggestions because I'm going to go out there, you know, trying my very best, you know, us Ohio people were really like, go, passionate. Yeah. let's go yeah, get passionate. it. With big hearts. So yeah, we like we, come yes, at it full do. force. Ohio's yeah. for lovers. I know it's a shape of a heart. Hawthorne Heights. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. so like you know we have that fire in us and yes, um I, I was just like I was like I just need give me all the information all this other stuff and uh, a friend of mine walked up and I think maybe he was like a little empathic too he was like you seem a little nervous what's going on and I was like well I'm gonna move to LA and he's like you know what my girlfriend's actually trying to rent out her room it's month by month I don't know if you found a place you probably already did but if not, you should text her. And I was like, yes, please. Because I had no place to stay. I didn't know where I was driving my car to. Right. I was like, if anything, I'm going to drive my car and I'm going to have to sleep in my car. Like I already made that resolution in my head that like nothing was going right. to stop me. Right. Because I knew that I was called to a new level of my life. Right. You had the burn and, um, the boats mentality. So, yeah. Yeah. So. And so I finally, like, I, I got a hold of her. I got that apartment. Yeah. It's the apartment that, you know, I have to the, today. Yeah. It's, it's just a little room. And, yeah. but it serves me well. It's, it's not need. anything super fancy. Yeah. It, but it serves me well. And I've been able to rest my head in a place. And I'm so grateful for that. Right. But then, like, you know, so that's a week before I was supposed to leave. Okay. And then three days before I leave, you know, I'm, like, packing everything up in my room. And I hear this big, like, bang and I'm like what was that and I look outside the window and my car the whole side of my car is sideswiped and demolished wow, wow. and I was like I I, lost, I like I crumbled I was like that's my that's my ticket that's my way that's like yeah. oh my god like what am I gonna do what's gonna happen and you know right. everyone around me the neighbors heard it you know my mom was there and they were like oh my god there's, there's all this commotion and I'm literally like I feel so alone and I'm just like, this isn't for me. 
Like, I'm going to have to let this dream go. Right. Like, damn. And I was like, you know what? It is what it is. God, you've t- showed me and you carried me this far. I, I, I'm telling you. He, Help me. He's been in my life so many times. That is crazy. Yeah. And um, two hours later, they found the person who sideswiped my car. Oh. The person had insurance. But they were under. They were young. So they, they were afraid and they ran. And craziness happened. They fixed my car and I had extra money to go to LA with, which then I bought my bed with. Like that is so, like it was the most, I will never forget the experience ever. Right. Like everything that came up against me, as soon as I was just like, it's in your hands, man, was like solved. Right. And it wasn't like, oh my God, it was like, you know, I would much rather not have my car be hit. But right. in the end, everything works out for a reason. For a reason, yeah. Yeah. I, crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. But yeah, I packed up my car. I got rid of like so many clothes, all my stuff, gave all my friends things, you know, and um, I packed it all up and I drove cross country. It took me three days. So I did increments. So my mom went with me, thankfully, because mm-hmm. um, she was like freaking out. She's like, my baby girl, my baby girl. Come back <laughs> home. I know. But she's like a severe warrior. Like I love her to death. But like, yeah. she's like, what if you get a tire? What if someone like kidnaps you? What if you eat bad food? Like all this other stuff. Yeah. And we did uh, 16 hours the first day, straight driving. Okay. 12 hours the second day, straight driving. We, and you get hotel rooms. And then we broke it up for six hours and then four hours after that. And right. Yeah. This country is so beautiful. I would yeah. do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah. That's kind of like when I drove across Florida for the first time. I was, I moved to go stay with my mom in Orlando and I was staying in the villages, like this like retirement community. It's like, and I was like, mom, I'm going back to Ohio. So I literally drove back like five weeks later and went back. So this was like right after I graduated in 15 from Ohio state. I was a political mm-hmm. science major. I was going to go to law school. I was like, yeah, do what my uncle does. And I was like, no, nah, that's not what I want to do with my life. Yeah, but that's a big, that's amazing how you take that journey and that dream out there. And I think that's where you're going to add a lot of people value through your story because a lot of people want to go out to LA and live this big life. But what is it like really like there? Like, that's the question. Honestly, if you can survive your first six months, you can make it here. Yeah. But coming from Ohio, I mean, you understand, it's a culture shock. It that's is. an actual thing. If you go to like France or something, you've never been to France and you live in America, yeah. like, you know, Ohio or something like that, you will get culture shock. Right. So if you're culture shock, it, and like it was, it was rattling and shaking. And this, this city asks you to either grow or you get yeah. eaten alive. Right. And if you don't want to grow, then don't come here. That's why I'm because going honestly, there. <laughs> yeah. Like Dang. if you want to grow, we can do it. You can do it. If you have the desire and that's your goal, grow. Right. Yeah. You can do it. But if you want to go to be famous, if you want to go because you think somebody owes you something, or right. they, you know, blah, 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 then you're going to get some rude awakenings. Right. But it, it first six months is the hardest because, you know, you don't really have a ton of friends. And if you right. do, that's awesome. Right. But you also understand like the pace is a lot different. It's oddly like slow, fast. It's hard to explain. It's like, it'll be very slow and like, at least my own personal story from like acting and modeling stuff. It'll be yeah. very slow. You'll get little jobs here and there and things like that. And then all of a sudden something will happen. It's boom, 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 boom. And you just got to be prepared. Right. So it's, it's different. It's a culture shock for sure, but you want to grow. And that's why I think you're going to be super successful out here is because you want to grow. You're such a giving person. You have a lot of offer and you know, even when things don't work out, you still keep an awesome you know positive attitude and you're still giving with your energy to others so people like flourish out here i think and maybe it's ohio upbringing i've noticed a lot of ohio people and i'm not going to say any other state is bad that's not what i'm saying but how people like they really they things happen out here for them it's great and it's not because it's like in the water it's just maybe the mindset that we're brought up with yeah. But like we, we have the core values. We, we really genuinely love people. We want to connect with them and be there for them. But we also like, we don't mind putting our hands in the dirt. Like I, I was at times like, it's just kind of embarrassing, but I'll say it anyway. I was a dishwasher for like two months when I was out here. 
everybody's like, oh my God, Molly acting, Taylor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I was doing that. I was also washing dishes. Because when you come out here with a desire to grow, you do whatever you have to do to be the biggest version of yourself. Right. Do whatever it takes to be hungry. Yeah. It's how hungry are you? And you're a really living true example of that. And I think that's amazing, you know, especially. Um, I just want to say, don't do whatever it takes, though. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think you have a point, and I know where you're coming from. But as a girl, I'm going to say to the girls watching. Yeah. It's very, it's, it's different out here. There's a sugar baby. There's a, there's a, all this stuff mentality. It's, it's a culture shock. Like I was terrified. I literally called home, cried. I'll say that my first six months, because I see people selling their body, selling, you know, all this other stuff for just money. And it's because the city is hard to survive in. Mm -hmm. And there were times where I had nothing to eat for a couple days. Oh yeah. I would, I know exactly what you're talking about. But it's like, I, I cannot do as a female personally, cause it's very easy out here for a female to be very successful, be rolling in that dough, having the greatest bags. And I'm not knocking anyone who does it. We all have our own life choices and we learn things from every situation. Yeah. But I just didn't want that to be me. Right. And like, I, it, it scares me sometimes when young girls, you know, girls that look up to me on social media or stuff like that, reach out and be like, I want to come to LA. You know, I want to do this. I want to be a model and actress. And I'm like, honey, Yes, I believe in you. You're gorgeous. You're smart. You got yeah. the drive. You got the passion. You got the talent. But like, you gotta be careful. Right. You gotta like really want it. Like, you're there's things people don't talk about behind the scenes. Like you've been saying, washing dishes and like working different odd jobs. Like I've had so many seasonal odd jobs throughout my life, and like I've learned what it's like to lose everything in your life. Because when I got my second DUI and this was about two years ago. That's when everything in my life, I lost my car, my license. I lost my license for two years. I get them back in May actually. And I have just, I've learned to be so grateful for what I have and my family and my apartment here in Pensacola and, um, you know, living close to the beach, you know, being able to look at what you have in your life and you're already winning. And a lot of people don't realize that they're not winning. So it's mm-hmm. like, and when you start focusing on what's, what's important, then you know? Yeah. It, it's like a big question is like, um, one of my friends was talking about motives, like, um, because honestly, like I'm a model actress, but I've stepped away from modeling and I kind of haven't really been acting that much. I've been, I found my lane out here. That makes sense. Like one thing I admire about you is like, not a lot of people, at least that I know of in our circle are doing this podcast thing and are right. doing it so consistently. Yeah. And it's like, you found your lane and it doesn't matter who's going by. You're not competing with Joe Blow or Sally, whatever. Yeah. Like you are just really like you're in your lane and you're going at the pace you need and you're getting, you're maybe taking some stops when you need to take a stop and you're going super fast when you need to go super, but you found your lane. Right. One thing that really kind of threw me for a loop out here is that I came here wanting to grow as a model and actress, right. not as a human being, not as a person. Right. And I, I now have found my actual lane, which I love public speaking. Yeah, me I too. love, I love like talking to people and like, right. you know, being there for them and reading books and understanding why the brain does what we do what and do. like why it ticks. emotions <laughs> and pain and like helping people surpass these things or overcome them. But like the hardest part I think was just like trying to switch out from lane. Cause everybody, everybody, I mean, I went in for the wrong reasons, right. but my mom, my friends or whatever, I got good pats on the back mm-hmm. for being a successful model and actress in Ohio. Yeah. And that's cool. But I just, I was not, I wasn't ready to grow. And that's where I started to kind of tear myself apart a little bit because I, I was so clinging to my, my old story because right. I wanted to be, and that's why I said like, um, with my, my, uh, principal, because mm-hmm. I wanted to, be, I wanted to show them, I want to show them that I can make it in the big Hollywood, you know, all this stuff as a model actress. Right. But that was never really my lane. It was something that I started into. And now I have to merge and take what I have in that into something bigger, a faster lane. Okay. Like a more scary lane. Where but yeah, th- if you're, sorry. Oh no, you're good. You can finish. I'm sorry. Where do you think like oh. you're becoming now though? Like that's what you're saying. You're becoming like your version, your lane. What do, where do you think your lane is now? Like motivational speaker, entrepreneur, act slash actress, slash slash career? <laughs> like, yeah, that's... I mean, um, acting and modeling has taught me a lot when it comes to personal branding and sales and marketing and yeah. um, how to present yourself. 
but um, I'd say I really love being like an encouragement coach. Like yeah. I'm surrounded by a really amazing community up here and I see these people just breathe life into each other, right. but also like breathe truth, which sometimes right. is hard to take. Yeah. And I love that. I love like how open and vulnerable you are with your own story. And I think the world needs more of that. Right. So one thing that I'm trying to work on is create um, a product or create a um, course a course or something because I, for it's kind of a long tangent, but, yeah. <laughs> but we're all in um, like, we're either coping or thriving right. in our life. And I did a lot of coping for a very long time. So right. I learned the bad sides of coping, but I also learned the good sides of coping and how when you cope properly, you can thrive at like times two. Right. So I want to help people with that because I think a lot of times in the self help, community yeah they go like coping coping versus thriving right and it's like why 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 is it versus why can't right. it be coping now because it's needed like a wound on your body like right. if you cut your leg like, that's what got me thinking about this whole change in career a little bit is like i fell and i busted on my leg pretty bad and i couldn't do modeling and acting right and so i was just like all right well well, I was still, what I was doing, I was, I was still putting on yoga pants over it and it freaking hurt. And I was going for runs and I was like, I got to do this because if I let my body go, I'm not going to be a good model and actress and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. Right. But I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's kind of crazy. I have right. a wound, you know, and I'm forcibly putting on yoga pants so I can hustle and be yeah. successful and all this stuff. When I should be right now, I should be nursing my wound. I should be nursing what happened to me. Right. And taking care of it. And then once it heals, I can then freaking bust it out. Right. Sorry, but that was like a side. No, you're yeah, good. That's, that's, of, that's behind the, the scenes stuff. I don't really know yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. You're making the move out to LA and I'm making the move in LA to something different. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's cool to see. Honestly, I don't know. I had a dream when I got out. Of, I went to jail for like 10 days. And when I got out of jail, I told my grandma, I was like, I had this dream that this man was in my dream. He said, I'd be speaking in front of thousands of people one day. And I told her this. And one day I was up in her room because I stayed with her for like five months while I was living with her. And all these black birds just came out of nowhere. There's like hundreds of them sitting, sitting outside my window. And I, 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 yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm like, okay, what spiritually am I doing right now? they are attracting in my life. And it said blackbirds are blessings and messengers from God telling you you're on the right path. And I was like, wow, I got so emotional. I started crying. I made like a Facebook live video because I was like documenting my sobriety. And I was just like, what if I'm like one day I'm going to head out West, but it took me a while to transform into who I was. Like and when I started having those gratitude states of mind, that's when my creativity and everything started coming out. Like this has been a journey. It doesn't like show up on your doorstep in a nice ribbon bow, you know, present like, Oh, you found your gift. Time to give it to the world. No, it's like you, it takes time. You have to learn to heal, learn to love yourself and you have to learn to grow individually because that's before joining any kind of relationship or professional life. Like you have to, hundred percent. you know? Yeah. Um, it's actually really interesting. Right. Well, last night, actually, this is my new realization last yeah. night because I was helping some, some clients at the company around here. And, um, I was like, you know, they were sharing their heartfelt stories and being open because they paid a good amount of money. And, um, I've noticed one thing that is kind of cool that like, if people aren't ready, if they don't have an opening, if they don't like give something or like, whether it be money. Cause I always with the person, this is just a side note. I was always a person right. that's like, no, I don't want to ask you for money. I just want to help them. But then they would not take my advice. And I'm like, what? And then yeah. I started seeing people come give advice and then they take it and it was because they paid them. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah. okay. But, um, um, and it was like the same advice. So it was weird. But anyway, yeah. I was seeing all these people, these guys, and they were sharing their story. They were sharing their pain. They were sharing all this other stuff. And I was like seeing almost reflections of myself in this. Just mm -hmm. this kind of like, and I was like, wait a second. Okay. And then you, you were saying about how you, you should heal and everything like that before you get any relationship. Anything. Well, yeah. Gotta love yeah, yourself. Exactly. Exactly. And so I was like hearing these guys or whatever, and I was seeing these wonderful individuals, yeah. wonderful guys that were giving that were, you know, that were trying to push through adversity or whatever it may be. Right. And um, then they were still tearing themselves apart. Right. And so I kind of was like, all right, I think real life is a reflection in a way sometimes. So I'm asking past. Yeah. Yeah. 
And one thing that I think is super common, and I looked into this, again, I learned this last night. So okay. take it if you want it, leave it if you don't. Reflection or self-projection in relationships yeah. is crazy. Crazy. Yeah. It is like, you crazy. know, the, the very common story, like the person that cheats and then they go like, you're cheating on me. Yeah. It's like, no, you're just projecting. It's, right. um, it's really, really, really interesting to audit the thoughts right and the emotions you have towards yourself right and if you're not doing that on an everyday basis whether it be like five minutes or you meditate for 20 million hours right or like you even write or whatever you have to do that because if you're not doing that mm -hmm. then you start projecting on other people and then that's why i think it's funny it's like so many people out here will be like everyone's fake everyone's I, I, that's fake. bullshit they're not fake exactly it's just like, okay, everyone's fake then. Maybe someone did treat you in a fake manner, but right. have you been fake to yourself and have you right. been fake to others? Because if that's the case, then congratulations, you have no thrown stone to throw. Right. Make sense? <laughs> but that you can say that about anybody in Columbus, like people are fake there. It doesn't matter where you are. People are going to be the way you think where they are from where you originally came from. So if you're going to think people are fake in Columbus, they're going to be fake out in LA. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Your environment shapes who you are. And when you learn to see all the bullshit because obviously we're very awareness empathetic you know people um you know mm -hmm. enfps i guess you could say and we're, we just we we can really connect with people's emotions and know what what's going on like i could walk in a room and just feel somebody's emotion mm. and my buddy would be like oh you're such a girl like oh that's, that's why i can never pick up girls growing up i tried you know playing sports and i started writing songs and playing guitar in college so like, oh those are great qualities what are you talking about oh yeah <laughs> And that's when I f learned I was a great writer and I was like, you know, I'm starting to love myself and I'd start writing my thoughts out. And I was in poetry club at Ohio state and I just, the Goo Goo Dolls is my all time favorite band, by the way, I've met them. Love John oh, Resnick. Awesome. Yeah. I that's love really Iris. Cool. Yeah. But, um, and I just have learned to open up to people. It's taken a lot of time and same thing with you, you know, sharing your story today and just opening up with people. Um, is there anything else like you're working on currently right now that people can find on your YouTube channel or, um, yeah. So right now, uh, today, actually when I hop off here, I'm going to do two videos. Yeah. Um, one actually like talking about what I've learned from projection and how yeah. I've like ruined relationships, yeah. work experiences and how I've walked away from big loads of money because I just was projecting something that wasn't even there. It was right. an internal thought that I was avoiding. Um, right. So like definitely check out the YouTube channel for sure. I'm okay. learning. I'm trying kind of similar to what you're doing with the podcast. It's something that like, I don't know. Did this scare you when you first started doing this? It did. Um, I mean, it first started as an idea last year. I was kind of just, I had a roommate and um, I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do. And he'd hear me like talk about my dreams. He was like, one minute you want to be an astronaut. One minute you want to be this. Like I would ask so many questions growing up. Like I didn't, I would annoy the crap out of my mom and you should be an actor. You can be everything, but I, nothing at the same time. <laughs> that's what my best friend, she told me before I left for boot camp um, for the Navy. She was like, you need, I want you to come try out for this audition. I never did. I was like going to the bar all the time. And she keeps telling me, she's like, Scott, you'd be an amazing actor. I could just see it in you. And so that's something I'm trying to get locally here in Pensacola. I'm trying to, you know, go to like some theater. If you can give me advice on that actually. And anybody who wants to try acting. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, acting out here, it's so it's kind of simple, but it's kind of hard in the same sense. Yeah. Um, so there's multiple companies that you can start as a background actor. It's very, it's, it doesn't feed your ego, but yeah. it's, it's good money. You get free food. Um, and it's easy work. So there's multiple companies like central casting, LA casting, uh, face to face, things like that, okay. where you just, you go in, it's very early and you fill out like your info, like your height, your, all of a sudden they take a picture yeah. and then you can check like your Twitter accounts and stuff like that and submit, submit, submit. Right. And, um, I was doing that for a couple months. I didn't have like a job right away. And so I was doing that and I was working five days a week and it's a, it's amazing. You get to be surrounded by really cool people in the same industry as you, things that you're interested in. Um, you get free food, it's easy money and and you get to see the behind the scenes of the industry. If that's something you really want to do, because I think it's important. Yeah. Cause I'm, 
I'm a big person about enjoying the process, you know, of things yes. in life. This podcasting, like you say, I'm in my lane earlier. Like I'm enjoying the process. So it's just like you, you know, acting and you know, your encouragement coaches that you're enjoying the process of uplifting other people with your story. I think you're starting to discover your strengths and your real gifts. Cause like usually when you start into something, things change along the way, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the, the industry of acting really appreciates people who have put in their time, right. who are not just wanting to be famous because there's a lot of those, but people who want to actually like, you know, who don't mind holding a light when they're actually like acting in it as well or okay. want to contribute because it's a very, um, it's a collaborative type of industry. Right. It, a lot of people jump into acting and stuff as competitive, mm -hmm. um, but it's very collaborative and um, you tend to see that. And if you, yeah. if you keep in the collaborative mindset versus the competitive, you're going to be a lot more successful right. um, because everybody has their own story. Everybody, even though we may look similar, you know, the girl next to me versus in me, like we're both very different. We have, um, she may play sad a lot better than I, than I play sad and I may play happy a lot better than she plays happy. So, you just have to understand that like it's nothing personal for one, but definitely start with the background stuff so you can see the process because process is important, like you said. Yeah. And um, then I would say, you know, um, keep track of your vouchers. Um, so I was really blessed. So when I first moved out here, I became SAG eligible my first month. It was amazing. It's awesome. Um, do you know anything about SAG? Uh, I've heard of them. I'm not like my, my friend, she knows more about acting, but I've heard the name. She's brought it up before okay. with me. She's, yeah. So she's She's done a lot of it, so. That's cool. SAG is just like a yeah. cool union um, for the people in the industry. And um, yeah. it's like a, it, it, there's pros and cons to it. So I would definitely yeah. look into it if that okay. becomes like personal story for somebody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, connect, you know, find people that you can make little background project, like little projects with on the side. Right. And um, just constantly push yourself and grow and you know, how can you add value in every situation? Always right. ask that. But um, backgrounds for sure. And then create a reel as soon as possible. As soon as you can create a reel, you can start um, reaching out to people um, that can kind of work for you and work with you okay. instead of you constantly always have to hustle yourself because right. it can get really exhausting. And um, you don't always know the right people to approach. So when you have someone in your corner with you, it's so helpful. That's awesome. So it's kind of like building your own resume, basically, and your story, I guess, yeah. kind of like on YouTube, talking about your life. Yeah. What Can you talk about any of the films you've been in as an extra or any like... Oh my gosh, I have like a folder. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was in um, Tax Collector with, um, it's like, I guess, a sequel Okay. with Shia LaBeouf. That was a really cool experience. That's cool. I've done J-Lo's music video. Um, wow. It hasn't been out yet, so look out for that. Okay. Um, I was the lead for uh, Que Bonito Es Querer, which is like, uh, I think it was in top that, five. I saw that music. Yeah, video. for Latin America. Yeah, um, your, your, in, your roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was cool. I'm actually thinking about going more in that direction. We'll see. You never know. Stay tuned. So. Uh, but yeah, I've done, I've done work for CBS um, on their lot. I've done things for Warner Brothers, right. Disney, um, they're smaller world roles. Like they're not anything that I like as an act, like as an actress that knows like something to brag about. Yeah. I wouldn't say they're anything that I would personally be like, yeah. yeah, but they're really cool experiences. And you know, just starting acting for this first like year and a half. So yeah. far I think I'm doing pretty good. Like no pretty well. you're, chasing yeah, um, you're progressing, what? you're chasing it and you're, you know, you're doing it. That's what matters. Yeah. So doesn't yeah. people, I mean, That's acting is great, but like, I've kind of seen this and this is kind of like a, maybe a, a negative viewpoint, but I'm done kind of auditioning. Like I do auditions, yeah. but like essentially the process of auditioning is you go to somebody with a list right? and you say, pick me, you know, I want to create my own list. Right. I want them to go like, we want her instead of me constantly putting in effort and blah 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 and all this energy saying pick me and then pick me and pick me and pick me and pick me i want to create my own list so that's kind of where i'm at right now Great hollywood too so that's like yeah exactly yeah. that's like it's kind of why i like slowed down a little bit with the projects like posting as much on my social media about like oh i'm in this and this and this yeah. because i was expending quite a bit of energy right asking people to pick me right. and i pick me 
Okay. And that's not a cocky statement. For the first time in my life, I pick me. Right. And I'm going to create my own mess. Yeah, this is your brand. life. You choose. You take what's yours out in this world and you go after it. Yeah. You know, Don't listen yeah. to the naysayers and what everybody tells you. Yeah, you gotta yeah. be a, you gotta be a lion mentality. Um, you yeah. were you also in the sure. All American show too? I saw you had posted something like that. At CW because yeah. I love CW. I'm a big Green Arrow fan. I love Stephen Mill. So oh nice, very Huge cool. Fan. Yeah, yeah. I was in All American. Um, I played the best friend of the star. Okay. She was very sweet, and it was cool. Um, that was the longest set, and I did that set actually on my birthday. So that That's was a cool, cool experience. That's like, pretty cool. You know, one birthday I'm driving out to LA, and the next birthday I'm on set with CW for yeah. All American. So it was a, a really cool, surreal. Supernatural experience. is my all-time favorite show. It's, uh, That's a good show. <laughs> I'll give movies. you that. It's one of my favorite shows. That's a good show. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's awesome. Um, are you working on your YouTube channel more too? Are you like putting more content on there, trying to grow that more? Because I know that's like been a big platform for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm. Tr- I first struggled with like because I'm a big dreamer. Yeah, me. Huge too. dreamer. Visionary. Like, yeah, I'm like this could work if I go this and let's do this and let's try this and sometimes it gets so big and then I do what I can with what I have and then I'm like that's not what I wanted. Right. So. My biggest struggle possibly with my YouTube channel is like just shipping it as Seth Godin would say in marketing, just ship yeah. it. Right. Just ship it. It's as you, again, with you said earlier, before we started the podcast, you can't compare someone's page one or chapter one with chapter 20. Yeah, you can't. And sometimes that's my, the biggest thing I have to remember when it comes to YouTube, because, you know, I see all these wonderful YouTube stars and people that are doing wonderful things or even like for you example, sometimes I'm like, wow, he's so motivating. He's so inspirational. And today I just want to hide under my covers. And it's like, yeah, but I like pulled like, you out. I'm like, no, you're coming out to tell yeah. your story today. This is your exactly. moment and I want you to shine. So, cause every day you I'm hold still off your dreams. Was, like, Hey, you know what? You took the courage to come on and you know, share yeah. it. So that's what matters. Just ship it. Just do it. Just do it. Be so, consistent. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be making two videos today and I'm going to edit one of them. I hate okay. editing. I know. It's but so- I'm going to edit them. And then um, I hopefully will have a post up on YouTube. So check out that either tonight yeah. or tomorrow morning. I just love how real you are. Like just sharing your personality. You're just like, I just got to edit it. You know, just got to, just got to go do it. You know, just, you know, uh, the, the daily grinds. Thanks. So, thanks. So You're very real as well. No, I try. A lot of people tell me I'm relatable. I'm very like relatable mm-hmm. to people. I don't yeah. know. I just, I don't know. Just easy it's to talk beard. to. Probably. I can relate to your beard. Yeah, yeah. Well, I finally got it trimmed down. I looked like a goat the other day. So I didn't want to show you up, so I just like I shaved it. <sighs> yeah, it's you can see some of my videos on my Instagram page. Um, <laughs> where can they follow you on Instagram at Taylor Diaz Mercado? Oh, um, yeah, that's my full name. All my social medias are the same. Okay. Um, so I'm the only Taylor Diaz Mercado in the world. Fun look, fact. Wow, look at that. The one and only original. <laughs> Thanks. So if you type in T D I A Z M. I will co- yeah. pop up anywhere you're looking. Okay. And same for your YouTube page too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. It's all the same. I try to make it easy because my last name is 11 letters and it's, it's yeah. like ridiculous. So. That's awesome. And I'm going to ask you a question. This is what I ask people in my interviews. Um, what is the legacy you want to leave behind, you know, one day when we're, we're all gone and you're doing you, you know? So. I guess I would just say, I hope like, people remember me as someone who loved who genuinely like loved and fought for love, like love, self love, love for others, um, empowerment, things like that. That's, that's the one thing. Like if I were to go tomorrow, I hope that my friends and family would know that like she loved everyone around her as best she could. And she tried to love herself as best she could. And, like that's what I want to create everywhere I go. It's just like I want people to feel just loved and seen and just important because that's what we are. And I think so many of us crave that. So, um, yeah, I guess just like something like because I think love is so powerful. It's such a like girly woo woo world, but like word, but it it's so important. I've I realized how important it really is and how much we talk about it, but how little we really know. So. Right. 
That's awesome. I, I, I feel the same thing, like sharing love in your life and not being afraid of, because there's a lot of guys out there who have masculinity issues and they have a hard time like showing their love and, you know, just be who you are and you will be a magnet to people because you're, you're being vulnerable and it shows your authenticity. So, and you're a living example of that. And I appreciate you coming on my show today and sharing me your story and your mission. And I, I love it. You are can inspire a lot of upcoming actors moving out to LA or if they're trying to grow in their hometown modeling. Um, you know, you are a living example of that. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thank so. you for having me. You're wonderful. And I really appreciate it. And it was great to talk to you and hopefully when you come out to LA, we'll get some tacos and we'll do more of this. And I know. If you I, need just, anything, I will. Definitely. Let me know. I was listening to a Counting Crows song. It's called Los Angeles. And he's like, he, at the end of the song, he says something like, LA's got the best tacos or something. So. Oh, they do. Uh, they do. And I'm Hispanic. Yeah. And I lived yeah. in Mexico. Yeah. They're the best. Yeah. Sorry. You have, like a, you have like a specific taco you like? or? Like- I do, but I have it pinned on my map because it's actually a taco truck and you have to check in with it and figure out where it is. Oh. So, you got to track yeah, it down. Yeah, it's good. You do. It has like all grass-fed beef it's like very la bougie but it's delicious so. okay. that's awesome well yeah. thank you i'm so excited much. for you I, you too and i can't wait for you to make that that big jump i think it's yeah. gonna be amazing and you're gonna you're gonna look back and just be like wow wow my life wow changed. i was yeah, talking it, to taylor that day and she changed my life <laughs> no no but i'm saying you're gonna look back at like yeah. where you are now and your situation yeah. and you're gonna look back and you're gonna be like I don't know, one year. We'll give it a year. Just it'll to be, be, fair, it'll be a year, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm hungry. You're going to look back, like, huh? yeah, that constant one year thing. And you're just going to yeah. look back and you're just like, wow, the man that I like, I am today at this one year mark. Right. Is just exceeds my expectations because you, you set great expectations for yourself. I do. But I, I think I, also, I too, like, it's not easy. You're a, you like, you do it. You, yeah. tr- you try it you do it and that's so important to the process and like it's really inspirational for me so right. thank you keep doing your freaking podcasts because i yeah. love them i'm gonna try it so i appreciate it yeah i'm gonna be put, putting a lot more content out for you guys and thank you for sharing your story and coming on today and you guys can follow me on instagram at scott 27 i don't know why i put my age next to it just somebody else has my name on instagram so i just thought and- it was your favorite number no, I just, I just turned 27. I still feel like I'm 26, though. So. Congratulations. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah, I'm a Sagittarius. Right. My, my birthday was in December. So. But, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Happy late birthday. Yeah, that's all right. And yeah, you guys can also follow my YouTube channel where I'll be uploading this video so you can hear more of her story. My, so you can subscribe at Scott Banco and her YouTube channel, Taylor Diaz Mercado and all of her amazing collabs that she does and her journey and her story. So thank you so much for being on today. I know I've said this like five times already, but um, God bless you and good luck with everything that you're doing. So you're doing a great thing. Thanks. You too.